Hey there guys and welcome once again to the PCBSD YouTube channel. My name is Josh and today I've got a video for you on how to build the PCBSD utilities from source. Now you may have seen in the past where a user will run into a bug in our software, maybe an app cafe or life preserver, and they'll go into our Redmine database at bugs.pcbsd.org and submit a bug report. From there the bug will get assigned uh, to one of our developers and then pretty quickly the bugs are normally resolved. Now after that bug is resolved your question may be well how do I how do I get to see that change basically without having to wait for the next package set and there is a way to do that um, and that is to build the rebuild utility from source. Um, the other reason you may want to do this is if uh, you've been talking with the developers and trying to find ways that you can help test out software you're going to want to have a way that you can quickly test any changes um, or fixes that they input into the software but Whatever your reason may be, the main purpose of this video is just to help you accomplish the goal of building the, the uh, PCBSD utilities from source. Now if you're familiar with GitHub and how it works, you probably don't need all the information I'm going to give you here in just a minute. But for the sake of those who may not know, or those that just want to refresh your course, I'm going to go ahead and go into a little more detail on that in the next section. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to want to clone the PCBSD source locally on our system. At the PCBSD project, we utilize GitHub to store all of our source code. To grab the source, you first have to go to https colon slash slash github.com slash PCBSD slash PCBSD. Now, I already have my browser open, so I'm just going to go ahead and pop it up here. I've already gone to that address. And you'll see over here in the middle right hand part of the screen, you're going to have an HTTPS clone URL. We're going to go ahead and just double, whoops, okay, or not. We'll just go ahead and right click and push uh, select all. And then we'll right click and just copy that. I'm going to just copy that to my clipboard so I can just easily uh, repaste that here in a minute. Now, just a quick note for those of you that uh, may not be able to keep up with the um, with the links I'm going to give you, I'm going to have all of those listed in the description under the video. So if uh, if you just want to wait until after the video is over and uh, grab those, they will all be um, easily available for you under the video. All right, I'm going to go ahead and minimize this now, and let's open the terminal. Well, I don't want that terminal. That is my terminal that has all of my ffmpeg stuff here. So let's flip over. All right, now that we have a terminal open here, we're going to go ahead and clone the PCBSD source into a local folder. Now, as a general rule of thumb, personally, I always clone it into my home directory, but honestly, you can clone it wherever it makes mo uh, the most sense for you. So, um, I am going to go ahead and type git clone dash dash depth equals one and then I'm going to paste that link right here that I right clicked and copied on uh, our github repository. Then after you've done that all you have to do is press enter and you're gonna see that it is cloning into a folder named PCBSD and this is in my home directory since I didn't go into any other subdirectories or anything else. Let's just go ahead and give that a minute to complete now you don't have to use the dash dash depth equals one if you don't want to. Um, you can just do git clone and the address. But we've found that if we're doing frequent check, uh, checkouts, if we just do the depth equals one, it's a shallow checkout and it'll basically allow you to check that source out, the most recent source out, super quick. So it'll save you a lot of time in the long run. All right, good. It already finished here. But just keep in mind, you may want to go ahead and give this up to two minutes or even a little bit longer if you're on a slower connection. It's really entirely based on how quickly it can download uh, the source file. So, all right, great. Now, if I type ls, I can see that I have a directory here named PCBSD that was just created once I grabbed the source and cloned it into that directory. We're going to go ahead and browse that directory and I'm going to give you guys a quick tour and just kind of go over with you. There's just a, a couple different kinds of utilities and I'll just show you what we have in there. So, 
Let's go ahead and CD into PCBSD. All right. Now you can see here, I'm going to go ahead and move my mouse over. SRC-QT5 is going to basically be our graphical utilities. You may find Life Preserver, App Cafe, uh, the Firewall Manager, other utilities that have a graphical interface you're going to find in here. So if you want to rebuild those utilities, this is where you would want to go. If you're looking for uh, something that's like a, a back-end utility such as SysCache or the PBI Manager, um, and I am talking about the back-end of the PBI Manager, not like, not, not like what we see with App Cafe, you would want to go into SRC-SH, and that's where you would want to rebuild those utilities. And I'm going to go into a little more detail. Uh, I just want to give you guys a quick uh, run through here. Now you'll also have a directory that says PBI modules. This is the source where we keep all of the PBI modules. Uh, really nice and simple. They each have a configuration file, each one of the PBIs, and those are all stored in here. We also have the retired folder, which is just our old utilities that have since been obsoleted. And src-webui, which is going to be the new app web uh, sources are going to be in there. All right, now that that part's done, let's say that we have a hypothetical situation where a developer has committed a fix to a PC BSD utility. In this example, we're going to use the PC Firewall Manager. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cd into the PC BSD source directory. All right. And once we're in there, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure everything is up to date. So we're going to type git pull and press enter. And you can see everything is up to date. I've already run git pull a little earlier today and the developers have not committed any new code uh, to the source right now. So the next thing, now that everything is up to date, that we're going to do is we're going to cd into the src-qt5 slash directory. Going to do a listing once we're in there, and we will see the directory of the program we're looking for is the PC-FW manager. So we are going to CD into that. And once we're there, let's go ahead and do a listing. All right, great. Now you can see there's no uh, there's no make file um, in here in this utility yet. We have to go ahead and uh, run an additional step that we're going to talk about since this is a QT based program. Now the first thing you're going to need uh, since this is a QT program is you're going to need to go ahead and grab the QT5 meta package. So if you haven't done so already go ahead and pause this video and just head over to App Cafe and then just do a little search. If we type in QT5 There it is. That's the one we're looking for. Now you can see I already have it installed, so that's no big deal for me. Go ahead and grab that, and uh, whenever you're ready, just go ahead and, and uh, we will proceed with the video. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and go back over here. Now, the command that we need to run after we've installed the QT5 meta package is slash usr slash local slash lib slash qt5 slash bin slash qmake and then just press enter. Now once you do that, it doesn't say anything happened, but if you do a listing here right quick, you will see there's a new make file right over here that has been generated. So that make file is going to be uh, what allows us to compile the program and uh, build it from source. Now, one thing to remember is if you're re rebuilding a shell-based PCBSD application, like say the PBI Manager backend or syscache, you don't have to run the qmake command. Now that we have our make file though, let's go ahead and build, uh, build the utility. What we're going to do now is, uh, while we're in the PC Firewall Manager's directory, we're going to type sudo make. Go ahead and type your root password and you should be in business. And you can see it building here. Now most PC BSD utilities are pretty small so it shouldn't take forever in a day to compile. So just give it a minute or two and we can see it's already finished here. Now if we do a listing here, you'll see that there's an executable 
that was generated here. If we want to go ahead and run this locally before we deploy it to our whole PCBSD system and basically replace the firewall manager that is currently running, what you would do is you would just type dot slash pc-fwmanager to run that locally. Press enter. Oh, of course, it needs to be run as root. All right, and you can see this is the firewall manager we just built. We can check it out, look, we can see everything looks okay, everything looks good, so we can just go ahead and close it out. Now that we're fairly satisfied um, that the program is working correctly and we got the developers fix and the firewall manager and it all looks good, what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going, going to deploy it to our whole PCBSD system. So then, in that case, you would do sudo make install and then just press enter. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now after doing so, if you open the firewall manager from the control panel, it should be the newest version of whatever utility you just rebuilt, in this case the firewall manager. So you should have whatever commits or whatever fixes the developers issued or applied earlier. Some graphical utilities require lib pcbsd to function. So if your build failed, simply go back to the src dash qt5 directory. We'll do a listing here. And you can see right here a directory that says lib pcbsd. What you may have to do is go ahead and cd into that directory and go ahead and build it just like we did um, with firewall manager. Firewall manager does not need to have that rebuilt but if you're rebuilding some of our other utilities it may require that. So just keep that in mind before you file a bug report if something isn't building uh, correctly, if you get a stop error, go ahead and rebuild libpcbsd and try again before you report that bug. Now like we kind of discussed earlier, if you are rebuilding anything, let's go back one directory and do a listing. If you're rebuilding anything that's in the src-sh folder, you should not have to do that extra qmake step. Most of the utilities in here, if not all, will have their own make file already generated and already put in there. So if you need to rebuild these, simply do a git pull, like we did earlier, and then run the sudo make command. Or if you want to deploy it to your whole system, sudo make install. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you, and as always, thank you guys so much for being a part of the PCBSD community. We appreciate it so much.